Hi guys, Alan from $50 Film School. So here's the thing, the other night we watched Pacific Rim and believe me, I did not go into that movie expecting it to be anything other than a big, brash, silly, expensive monster slap about, which is kind of pretty much what it is. But here's the interesting thing about it. When you take somebody like Guillermo del Toro, who's just such an extraordinary filmmaker, and you know, you look at Pan's Labyrinth, one of the most um, exceptional, surrealistic, um, enchanting, horrifying fairy tales ever made. Um, <clears throat> it's interesting when you slot him into the kind of Michael Bay Transformers mode, there's really nothing of Guillermo del Toro's kind of auteur uh, way of seeing the world that, managed to that manages to survive the big, big Hollywood machine. Um, there was, you know, that really could have been a Michael Bay movie pretty much, as far as I can see, maybe you disagree. Um, and the thing that struck me about it was that it was kind of, it, it had all the pleasures and all of the, well I wouldn't say all of the pleasures, let me rephrase that, it was akin to Playboy in a certain way. You know, you look at something in Playboy and you go, wow, ooh, gosh that looks perfect, isn't that beautiful? But very, very quickly you kind of go, but reality is more interesting and preferable. And the kind of airbrushed quality uh, of, um, of the movie was so kind of, it's just not enough to sustain uh, interest even when you're quite happy to just go and have a, a silly, brash, vulgar, expensive movie. You know, um, I, I, there was so much in it that I really enjoyed. The scale of the film is just, I mean, literally the scale of it is, is really impressive in its own right. Just how colossal the robots are is is great fun. The visuals are you know really terrific on that on that side of things. From a technical point of view, it's just jaw droppingly complicated and wondrously well achieved. The amount of sort of fluid dynamics and uh, particle systems and complex uh, rendering and lighting and shading that's going on in the three D side just you know boggles the mind. Um, but actually, the story was um, I say I say story. There there is a story there and. It was more engaging than I expected it to be. Um, <clears throat> the central uh, kind of caricature, if you like, romance, uh, bromance, camaraderie between uh, the female lead and the male lead was just, I had to laugh out loud because I found myself getting engaged with it in a way that I, I didn't really want to. Um, there's, a, there's an initial scene where they, they sort of flirt by beating seven shades out of each other with karate sticks. And it's, it's just preposterous, but there was a part of me that actually bought the chemistry between them. So, <clears throat> notwithstanding, after about an hour and a half, I, I just really, really just got bored with it. And um, you can throw so much talent, so much um, uh, Playboy style airbrushing at the screen, so much kind of, ooh, ah, ooh, it doesn't look, that look amazing. But at the end of the day, if you, your story can't sustain those kind of visuals, it will crumble under its own weight. Um, anyway, your thoughts, welcome as always. Thanks for listening. Please uh, comment, share, subscribe, thumbs up. And here, over the next few days, I'm filming a lot of content, uh, the final amount of content for $50 Film School. So if there's something that you would really like me to address, anything at all, you know, hey Alan, I'd really like a bit of advice or help or tutorials on X, Y or Z, let me know. And if I can't provide that myself, I'll go away and source it so I can give you the proper teaching and feedback that you want. Um, uh, so please let me know. And it, I guess if you have a favourite Guillermo del Toro film or a favourite um, uh, monster epic, uh, let me know your thoughts on that too. Okay, thanks so much. Speak soon. God bless. Bye.